Hey guys, welcome back to Massive Electric. Uh, so I got a video for you today on uh, six ways to find a loose connection without any tools. Uh, it doesn't take an electrician to do this and uh, we'll talk about that here today. So before I get started, hit that subscribe button. Uh, you can expect two to three videos a week from me on general electrical Q&A uh, as well as troubleshooting for the non-electrician. So I have a question for you to answer in the comment section below. Uh, have you ever tried to resolve your own electrical problem? Uh, what was the issue and what did you do to resolve it? So uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions you have down there as well. This issue had come up a couple days back. I was uh, doing some work for a friend of mine and uh, we we're just talking about general electrical things that he could look for around the house just as a homeowner. And um, I talked to him about a few things that uh, he could do if he had electrical issues in the house, how breakers work and things like that. Um, and one of them was this issue we're going to discuss today. And that is, uh, I gave him six things that he can look for if he has or suspects that he has a loose connection. And it doesn't take any special tools other than maybe a screwdriver to take a device out or a plate off or something like that. But uh, looking for a loose electrical connection doesn't take special multimeters or testers or any special experience. Uh, you know, of course, there's always the safety factor. You know, you can't stick your fingers where they don't belong and be careful of energized circuits and things like that. Uh, but looking for a loose connection is actually... It's pretty easy, actually, and it doesn't take an electrician to do that. Uh, it is something that you could do. Um, and there are some symptoms of a loose connection, which we've talked about in the past. If you think you have an electrical issue in the house that might be caused by a loose connection, you might see symptoms such as flickering lights. And that could be fixtures or recessed lighting in the ceiling. It could be lamps that plug in. Um... It could be flickering uh, display lights or clocks, like an alarm clock. Uh, it could be a TV that's plugged into an outlet and the TV is um, flickering off and on, which actually is not good for the TV. Um, so usually lighting is the most common thing that you would see with uh, a loose connection or that might be caused by a loose connection. Although there's other things, but that's the most visible. So as far as symptoms, those are the most common visible symptoms that you would see is lights flickering or electronics or uh, any kind of indicator lights flickering off and on. Uh, or you might have talked to someone that had a similar issue at some point and they might have said that you have a loose connection somewhere or if you talk to maybe you have a friend that's an electrician and he mentioned that, uh, you know, the problem that you might be seeing could possibly be a loose connection. So uh, whatever the symptoms are, whatever the situation is, if you are looking for a loose connection or you think that you are looking for a loose connection, uh, there are ways that you can see it, like I say, without any special tools or anything like that. So one of the first things to uh, remember is that uh, a loose connection electrically means that electrons are not flowing through the conductor or the terminal strip or the wire nut uh, like it ought to be and the electrons are trying to get from point A to point B uh, and they can't do that. And usually there is heat associated with this uh, and that heat causes all kinds of crazy stuff to happen um, which if you don't find the problem, it'll get a lot worse. Uh, but uh, you can actually see, there's some things that you can see if you have a loose connection. And uh, so keep in mind that a loose connection can be anywhere in a circuit. It could be in a fixture, could be in a junction box, it could be behind a device, that is, could be behind a switch or a receptacle or a GFCI. Uh, could be in a splice, which would be ideally in a junction box. Um, could be 
like I said, it could be in a light fixture, could be in the electrical panel. Uh, so knowing where to look is another half of this, which actually I should probably make a video on something along those lines, but um, knowing where to look is a different issue, but you can find or you can determine if you have a loose connection um, a couple different ways. So first of all, probably the most common is to look for carbon residue buildup. That is, you will see on the, on the connection, be it a uh, wire nut or a Wego, which is the type of little plastic connector that you push the wires into, they're usually square or rectangular, uh, or if it's a terminal block that has screws in it, or if it's uh, any number of type of electrical connections, uh, spade lugs, uh, Polaris taps, you do have to be careful with carbon residue buildup. Usually you can see it, you don't have to start touching things. Um, and you do have to be careful because anywhere you have a terminal, if it's a, a hot conductor or the neutral, it could be carrying electricity uh, if you don't know where that circuit is or if the circuit's on or off. So you do have to be careful about it. You don't want to touch a connector or a live connection. Uh, but if it's on a wire nut or if it's on the face of a device, a lot of times you'll see uh, like a receptacle that has a burn mark on the front of it. That burn mark is carbon residue. And um, if you wipe your finger on it, it'll just wipe right off. So that's carbon residue. Like I say, it's black or gray or brown in color. Uh, it looks like discolored plastic, but it could be on uh, the metal parts of the uh, connection as well, which you do have to be careful about, like I mentioned. So that's number one, looking for carbon residue buildup. Uh, the second thing that you can look for is to look for burned insulation on a conductor. So wherever that conductor is terminated, under a screw, you know, wire nut, you know, fixed to something, uh, if you have a loose connection, the heat from the loose connection will eventually cause the insulation on the wire to get hot, turn black, and it may melt or it might just get hard, like very, very hard and brittle, um, but it's visible. It'll be, it'll be black or brown in color. It'll be discolored insulation. So if you have like a, a red conductor, if you have a red wire uh, connected to a circuit breaker that has a loose connection on it, that wire, that red wire, at the very end where it's connected to the circuit breaker, it could be discolored, black, brown, uh, maybe gray, but it'll look visibly burned. Uh, and I've even seen it to the point where the insulation will be burned off some distance from where the connection point is at. So um, it'll be right near the connection and it'll start burning back along the wire. So it won't be in the middle of the wire, it'll be right at the end, close to the termination. And if you see that, you know that that's a bad connection or a loose connection. So the third uh, thing that you can look for if you're looking for a loose connection is to look for an arc at the point of connection. And that is an arc or a spark. Now, if you are looking at a connection and there's no movement in the building. Everything's quiet, no ACs are running, no appliances are running, uh, there's no fans or motors that are causing slight vibrations. You may not see any kind of arcing or sparking at, the, at any connector anywhere. But if you've narrowed down a circuit at, that you believe has a loose connection on it, um, you know, say it's one of your lighting circuits and you think that there's a loose connection somewhere, uh, but you're not sure if it's in the hot or the neutral. If you go to the hot wire and the neutral wire, wherever there's a connection, be it a junction box or you know, at a device or whatever, if you move the wires, you have two black wires inside of a wire nut as an example. If you move those two wires and you look at the connection itself, you can see a slight spark. So but you gotta know what you're looking for there. 
probably the easiest place to see this without it being inside of a wire nut because the wire nut's going to have a plastic uh, cover around it, you know, hiding the connection basically. But uh, usually inside of an electrical panel, when you have wires terminated on a terminal bar, um, you know, you'll have like all the neutrals all connected together side by side in on a terminal bar inside the panel. Um, and if the loose connection had just started recently to where it's not showing signs of carbon residue and it's not showing signs of uh, uh, burned insulation on the neutral, that is the white wire. If you find the white wire that you suspect is on the circuit that has the loose connection and you ever so slightly move that white wire in the terminal where it's connected, there'll be a little screw there, not touching it, but you're touching the wire. Um, you can see a little spark if there's lighting or an appliance that's on that circuit and uh, drawing any type of current off of that circuit. Uh, you can see a spark. It's a possibility, so it's just something to look for is to look for an arc at the point of connection. The fourth thing that you can look for if you are looking for a loose connection uh, and this is the most visible with lighting. It could be with an appliance that's plugged in. It could be a TV, microwave, if you can see any kind of lights or indicators on it, uh, alarm clock or any, something like that, is um, to look for lights flickering when the wire that has a loose connection is being jiggled around. And uh, so if I were to suspect, actually this had just come up too, uh, if I were to suspect that there's uh, a loose wire somewhere in the circuit, in a lighting circuit, if I pull the switch out and behind the switch I start jiggling the wires around in there and if as I jiggle the lights flicker, then I know that there is a loose connection in some terminal inside that junction box. So that's pretty easy. But again, you do have to be careful uh, not to touch any of the live conductors. Uh, you know, you can touch the wire, the insulation on the wire, the wire nuts, you can touch the face of the device, but you do have to be careful um, because underneath the wire nuts, the wires can be live and on the sides of your device, be it a switch or an outlet, uh, those screws, the terminal screws on the side of that device uh, can be live as well. So the fifth thing that you can look for if you're looking for a loose connection uh, is to look for blackened or burned metal at the point of connection. So if you see, like I just talked about number three, if you're looking for, if you see an arc at the point of connection when you move the wire around a little bit, uh, if it's been prolonged and you've had like lights flickering for a few months and you couldn't determine where the problem was at, uh, over a period of time, that slight arc will discolor and or burn the metal, be it the copper or aluminum wire, or the terminal screw, or the spade lug, or the um, terminal block where the wire is connected to, uh, it'll also become burned. Now, obviously it won't be as visible as it would be if it were wire insulation or wire nut because of the heat, but uh, the the wire, or I'm sorry, but the the metal at the point of connection uh, can get burned or blackened, and uh, I have seen this under a circuit breaker. The newer circuit breakers that have that uh, connect to the panel, uh, where the bussing is, there's little fins, uh, little tabs that connect to the back of a circuit breaker. Uh, if you have a circuit breaker that's not fit right, or it's bent or damaged. Um, or has just been had a loose connection for a long period of time, the the bussing will get discolored behind a circuit breaker, um, and this is actually if you see this, it, it's actually something that you're going to have to look at possibly replacing your whole panel. But I don't want to get into the troubleshooting part of that right now. But uh, you can see blackened or burned metal at a loose connection. So uh, the number six thing that you can do to find a loose connection, which I actually mentioned just now, is uh, to look for melted plastics 
near the connection. And this is very common with a loose connection underneath a wire nut. And so if you suspect you have an outlet with a lamp that's got a loose connection in it, take the outlet out, look behind there, and you see a wire nut that is melted or melting or discolored or is not the right shape or it looks like it's been melting, uh, you have a loose connection in there. And um, that's going to take a little bit more than just replacing the wire nut because the wire itself will probably be damaged uh, and it'll take a little bit more work to, to actually fix that. So, um, so most of these, actually all, of, uh, let's see, four out of the six of these things we talked about, you can do with the circuit turned off. So you can look for a carbon residue uh, with the circuit off. Uh, you can look for burned insulation on the wire with the circuit off. You can look for blackened or burned metals at the point of connection uh, with the circuit off. And you can also look for melted plastics near the connection with the circuit off. So two of these, uh, you kind of need to have the circuit on in order to find uh, a loose connection. Uh, if you're looking for arcing or sparking at the point of connection. Um, and if you also look for uh, flickering lights as you jiggle a wire if you're looking for flickering lights uh the circuit does need to be on obviously so those two things um you can you'll have to do with the circuit on which i don't want to say it's unsafe but you do have to be careful because you know you got to watch where your fingers are at so anyway that's about it um thanks for watching hope that video was helpful for you today um just six things that you can do to find a loose connection if you know that you have a loose connection and if you're looking for a loose connection. So I hope it has been helpful for you. Uh, please subscribe for more videos like this and uh, you know, share this video with anyone that you think uh, would find it helpful. Uh, also, if you liked the video, give it a like. If you disliked the video, give it a dislike. Um, Add a comment, you can send me an email at massiveelectric2014 at gmail.com. Uh, check out my Instagram at massive underscore electric. You can hit me up in the DMs there if you have questions. Uh, and also Twitter, I don't use it too much, but you can uh, hit me up on Twitter at massiveelectric. So thanks for watching and have a good day.